All right, welcome back. No fancy intro this time. Just going straight into video number two. Tried to mess with my surface a little bit, so I'm hoping it works a little better for us. But we're diving into radicals. It's time to get radical here. Um, so, square root of 32. How do you break down radicals? You look, if it's a square root, like this one is, you look for perfect squares that are factors of 32. If it's a cube root, like this one is, and you look for perfect cubes. So square root of 32 is the exact same thing as the square root of 16 times 2, correct? Well, which one of those is a perfect square? 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 gives us 4, and the square root of 2 is not perfect, so it remains behind. So the answer is 4 root 2. That's how you simplify a radical. What about this one, cube root of negative 27? Well, first you might think, well, that's an imaginary number. No, it's not, because it's a cube root. So that's actually possible. The cube root of negative 27 is the same thing as the cube root of negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So the cube root of 27 is just negative 3. Okay? What about example 3? The way I teach this is you go each individual piece. You do the square root of, um, and here we go again. It's not working. You do the square root of, Come on, maybe red. Red, okay, blue's just not like it. You do the square root of 25, the square root of x to the fourth, the square root of y to the fifth. So, that gives me a five on the outside. Okay, anything that's perfect can come out. The square root of x to the fourth is just x squared, that comes out. And then y to the fifth. Well, y to the fifth is technically the same thing as y to the fourth times y. Look at that, acting so weird y to the fourth times y. Let me write it way down here. It'll help me. No, it won't. So anyways, y to the fourth times y. Maybe I can write it up here. So weird. So the square root of y to the fourth gives me y squared. And then there's one y left over on the inside. Okay. Last one, cube root. We have to look for perfect cubes. We're looking for perfect cubes. So 16 is the same thing as um, 8 and 2. And 8 is a perfect cube. So perfect cubes will come out. What's the cube root of 8? The cube root of 8 is 2, and that goes on the outside. The 2 on here stays in. And then we look at x to the 5th. Well, x to the fifth is the same thing as x to the third times x squared, and one of those two is a perfect cube. The cube root of x to the third is just x. The cube root of x squared, you can't do that. So what's, what was a perfect cube came out on the outside, and what was not perfect cube stayed on the inside. Okay, if you have questions on this, we can connect tomorrow when I come back. All right. Next, we've got a, a square root. We're going to use this a lot when you have a square root of a fraction. It's the same thing as if you had the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So your final answer is square root of 7 over square root of 9x squared, which is 3x. Okay, moving on. What if we add and subtract some stuff? Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to simplify your radicals. You need to break them down, which is what we just did. Okay, simplify them. Because then the rule is you can only add or subtract if the root is the same. If the root is the same. Okay, for example, um, if we're going to do negative 4 on the square root of 75 plus 3 on the square root of 50, okay, I will fail you guys if you say that this is negative 1 on the square root of negative 75 or something like that. If you just subtract these and do this minus this and this minus, no, 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 no. Okay, we've got to break these radicals down first. So, 
this is the same thing as 25 times 3. So the square root of 25 will send a 5 to the outside. So that makes negative 20 and leaves a 3 behind. And then this one, 150, that's the same thing as 25 times 6. So that sends a 5 out here. Here, I'll show my work. 25 times 6. Square root of 25 is 5, so that makes 15 on the square root of 6. Can these be added? No, they cannot. Okay, because they're different. Root 3 cannot add with root 6. You could only add if it was negative 20 on the square root of 3 plus 15 on the square root of 3. Then we could add because they both have root 3s as the base. Okay, so adding and subtracting, they must have the same base for it to work. Multiplying, though, is different. You can multiply anything. So let's just make up an example. 4 on the square root of 3x squared times 2 on the square root of 6x cubed. When you multiply, you just do what's on the outside multiplied together. So 8 and what's on the inside multiplied together. 6 times 3 is 18. x squared and x cubed makes x to the fifth. Then you see, can I break it down? Which you can. You look for perfect squares. 9 is a perfect square. 9 times 2 makes 18. So the square root of 9, that's going to pull a 3 out to give us 24. And leave a 2 behind. And then x to the fifth. The square root of x to the fifth. The way I do it, kind of a shortcut, you know there's a 2 here. How many times can 2 go into 5? can go in two times evenly. So I'm going to have two of those come out with one left over. Okay, and that's our, that's our answer there. Last thing, don't forget to rationalize the denominator. Okay, so if you have three over, we did a lot of this with, with the unit circle. So to rationalize, you multiply the top and the bottom by whatever the radical is. So you get three root two over 5 times 2. So your final answer will be 3 root 2 over 10. So that's how you rationalize. Okay? Alright, we're halfway done with this video, and there's just a couple more things. I'm not even going to be able to show you all of it, but that's okay. I'm going to open up the second page. You should already have this in your packet, but it's part 2. So we're going to talk about some radical operations. Um, wait, adding or subtracting, we already talked about that. Multiplying, we just did that. And rationalize. Oh, great. So we're, nice, I will have time to finish. All we have left then to finish is fractional exponents. Perfect. So we talked about this a little bit on the first video, but you really need to understand. So you should not panic when you see x to the 1 half. You should see that as the square root of x. Okay, notice, the 1 technically went here, x to the first power, and the 2 became your radical. Okay, so that helps us when you see a 2 thirds, you know that this is a cube root, because the bottom number becomes your root, and then it's y squared, so the cube root of y squared. You just need to know kind of where the top number in the fraction goes and where the bottom number. 4 to the 3 halves would become the square root of 4 cubed. Notice the 2 went here, square root, and the 3 went here. So that's what fractional exponents represent. Okay. Next, rule for exponents still works. So when you have y to the 1 fourth raised to the fifth, you multiply those. Okay. When you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply. You multiply. Okay, when you have an exponent multiplied by another exponent, you add. So that would be w to the negative 2 fifths. And hey, we don't like negatives, so let's write this as 1 over w to the 2 fifths. Okay. And if I wanted to go farther, it's 1 over um, the fifth root of w squared. Right? Power goes to the bottom. Same thing over here. Y it be the fourth root of y to the fifth. If 
5 to the 3 6 times 5 to the 4 6. We add our exponents, which gives us 5 to the negative 1 6, which is the same thing as 1 over 5 to the 1 6, which is the same thing as 1 over the 6th root of 5. So our rules are starting to stack on top of each other now. Okay. And this is it. Let's finish up the page. Write each expression in radical form. Well, it's 4x to the 5 6. So that is going to be the 6th root of 4x to the 5th. Notice those parentheses are huge. Those parentheses are huge. Okay. Next, we have d to the negative 3 halves. Well, that's the same thing as 1 over d to the 3 halves which is the same thing as 1 over the square root of d cubed. Okay, moving on. Uh-oh, we have a square root here. Well, let's rewrite this as 5 to the 1 half raised to the 7. It's a lot easier because now we just know, hey, exponent raised to another exponent. We add. Boom. Now we've got 4m, the cube root of 4m. Let's rewrite this as 4m to the one-third power. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Um, 4m to the one-third power. Just doesn't want me to write it. Slide it over here then. 4m to the one-third power. All raised to the fourth. So we've got to multiply those. So it's 4m to the four thirds. Okay, and parentheses make a big difference here. All right? You can try some of these on your own because our video is, is coming to a close. I'm going to look and see if there's one that I think would be more difficult than the others. Maybe b. Just remember, if it's 4x to the eighth to the one half, you take that one half to the four and to the x to the eighth. So it will be 4 to the 1 half times x to the whatever 8 times 1 half is, so fourth. So the square root of 4 times x to the 4. So 2x to the 4. So all of these rules, they, they add together. They work together. You have to be familiar with all the rules, how to add radicals. I want to show you. Um, what you're going to work on. I'm still updating this, but it's going to be in this this tab. Chapter P notes, day two. I'm going to add change this to say sub day. Here's where I'm about to embed video number two. But here's what I want you to work on. This uh, worksheet, fractional exponents and radicals. And we'll look at that on Friday um, a little bit before our test or after the test, but it just looks like this. Some fractions, some radicals, some negatives. It's just kind of practicing the skills that we learned the last couple of days. So, that is everything. Um, just work silently if you have other things to work on, if, if you finish that homework assignment. Remember your test on Friday. I'll be in Friday morning, uh, Thursday morning, if you want to come in for some extra help. Uh, solving trig equations should be your main priority tonight. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday.